Welcome today, as my dad David shares from his heart this short, biblically-based devotional. David is a speaker, author, former pastor, songwriter, and founding director of Youth with the Mission, Montana. He is also the author of the song, In Moments Like These. This song appropriately describes this podcast, and I know his message will be encouraging to you. It was a glorious, clear, cool, and sunny morning here in our spacious Montana Valley just a couple days ago. So I decided to take advantage of it. I put a handful of unsalted raw peanuts in the right pocket of my old black vest so I could hand feed some of my feathery friends. And I headed to our garage for some gardening tools and then outside to do some spring cleanup. Not more than a minute later, I began the really fun task of raking up many hundreds, probably millions, of pine cones, which were scattered most everywhere around our entire yard. They had been dropped there during our long winter, precious little gifts placed there on the ground, just for me. They were placed there by our family of tall and all-too-generous evergreen trees. It wasn't long before I had to pause and take a breather. And during those pausing moments, I prayed, and I asked the Holy Spirit to help me with something. In my last episode, I talked about asking God for specific wisdom on matters. And standing there, out on the pine cones, I asked Him to give me specific direction. I said, Dear Holy Spirit, I have no idea yet what I should talk about in this week's episode. I ask you to give me direction. Please speak a specific subject into my mind. Please tell me what's on your heart for our listeners, the fathers, sons, and daughters. Almost immediately, I heard the word compassion. Wow, I thought as I began to ponder on the word and its importance. That's so right, I thought, so timely. About an hour later, during a short lunch break, I told Kathy about what had happened outside, and I asked her, Honey, who is the first person that comes to your mind when you think of the word compassion? Her answer, and the person I was thinking of, was Mother Teresa. And then we began reflecting again to a February morning in 1994, when we both had the privilege of hearing her speak. You may recall from one of our earlier episodes that Kathy and I had been invited to that year's National Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C. And, as I said, it was there that Mother Teresa spoke humbly but boldly, standing only a few feet away from the President and Vice President of the United States and their wives, and in front of a conference hall full of Congress people. Among other things, she talked about the evil of abortion. But what blessed Kathy and I most was simply the opportunity to personally witness her steadfast character. She was a woman who had lived out an unyielding lifelong commitment to compassion. Mother Teresa, who was born Agnes Boyajiu in modern-day Macedonia, spent most of her life in India working with the poor, sick, and destitute. The order she founded, the Missionaries of Charity, has since opened more than 500 centers around the world, offering compassionate service to underprivileged and alienated people who have been failed by existing social structures. Here are some writings by Mother Teresa that crystallize her vision of what she calls compassion in action. Excerpts taken from the book Handbook for the Spirit by Richard Carlson and Benjamin Shield. To me, Mother Teresa wrote, God and compassion are one and the same. Compassion is the joy of sharing. It's doing small things for the love of each other. Just a smile or carrying a bucket of water or showing some simple kindness. These are the small things that make up compassion. Compassion means trying to share and understand the suffering of people. It's only pride, selfishness, and coldness that keep us from having compassion. 
when we ultimately go home to God, we're going to be judged on what we were to each other, what we did for each other, and especially how much love we put in that. It's not how much we give, but how much love we put in the doing. That's compassion in action. She continues, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. If you do everything for him, you are acting as contemplative, thoughtful in the heart of the world. There is contemplative life where people separate themselves completely from the world and live a life of prayer and sacrifice. We are out in the world doing that, being contemplative in the heart of the world. She concludes, My message to the people of today is simple. We must love one another as God loves each one of us. And the fruit of love is service, which is compassion in action. What an example of compassion in action our sister Mother Teresa was. And of course, the greatest example of compassion in action was that demonstrated by the Lord Jesus himself. There was never any before him or since who gave more for others than he did, and it came out of his commitment to compassion. Here is one of multiple examples. Matthew 9, 36. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Over and over, we see Jesus exhibiting a heart of compassion. He was motivated by that one thing. He saw people in the whole gamut of their need. He saw people not in abstract categories, such as males and females, Jews and Gentiles, aliens and citizens, adults and children. This included the sick and the lame, the demon-possessed, a Roman centurion, tax collectors, a broken prostitute, a woman caught in adultery, and many more. Jesus saw people as individuals made in God's image, each a member of God's human family and a potential member of his spiritual family. And of course, the message in all this is this. The Holy Spirit of God wants us to exhibit the same kind of compassion and kindness that Jesus did. And he wants us to do this like never before. 1 John 2, 6 says, Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2 say it this way, Therefore, be imitators of God as dearly loved children, and walk in love as Jesus loved us and gave himself up for us. We need to be imitators of Jesus and love as Jesus loved. A couple of months ago, I had to go through a medical procedure at my doctor's office. The procedure would take about a half hour. I knew it would be uncomfortable, even painful, because I had gone through the same procedure twice before. There were two nurses who attended to me during the preparation, the prep time. Having gone through my share of surgeries, both minor and major surgeries, I have found that most nurses are compassionate and kind by nature. These two young women were of no exception. They were kind. But I got the feeling that they were feeling just a little bit weary. Not surprising, our medical community worldwide has gone through some pretty tough times over the last few years. So I felt very compelled to share some words of encouragement with them. I honestly can't remember all I said, but I got the strong impression that those moments prior to my procedure were important to God and to those dear nurses who were made in His image. The time finally came for me to change out of my clothes and to get into one of those embarrassing hospital garments just minutes before the doctor would step into the room. So one of the two nurses directed me to a small changing room just a few steps away from where I was sitting. As I walked through the changing room doorway and slowly closed the door behind me, 
I could hear one of the nurses whisper these words to the other. She said, Isn't he just such a nice man? And I thought to myself, Oh my, not enough people are being kind to them. Dear friend, I believe the Holy Spirit spoke the word compassion to me in my yard the other day for a very important reason. I believe He and the Father and the Son are deeply concerned, like Jesus was concerned when He was on this earth, concerned over the welfare of the confused and weary. I believe He wants us all to step it up in the action of compassion. The world needs kindness from Jesus right now, and that means the world needs kindness from us. I encourage you to ponder that, dear friend, and then look for your next opportunity to do that. When lunch was over for Kathy and me the other day, I returned to my yard and my precious pine cones. It wasn't long before I had to pause and take another breather. And in only moments, a red-breasted nuthatch, one of my favorite little birds, landed on the handle tip of the rake I was leaning on, waiting for me to reach in my pocket and pull out a peanut. And so I did. I told him, Hi there, little one. You're looking really strong and handsome today. He seemed to like me saying that. Then he gratefully took a peanut from my hand and flew off into the forest. And as he did, I did what I often do. I took a few moments to thank our Father in Heaven for His little gifts and for a lifetime of His loving kindness to me. And He said, You're welcome, son. Dear Holy Trinity in Heaven, You so loved and still do love the world so very much. Your compassion is proven to be beyond measuring. Your loving kindness never ceases. I ask that you remind my friend, your dear one here, of just how much compassion and kindness you've shown to them. And I pray you give them a new fervent desire to imitate you and to passionately exhibit your compassion and kindness. Let it be. You've been listening to In Moments Like These with David Graham. If you'd like to contact David or find out more information about In Moments Like These, please visit InMomentsLikeThese.com.